Hi, and welcome to the Resilience Podcast. It's Brad Hook here, and today I'm joined by Mark Lauren, an internationally recognized expert in bodyweight training and an author who has sold 1.7 million copies worldwide. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excellent. So fascinated to hear a little bit more about your background, how you got interested in becoming a trainer and, uh, you know, some of your story, your journey so far. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so, so basically, um, my whole journey, um, sort of, and, and, and life's passion started out as, as, as a young kid. Um, I was just skinny and um, wanted to look good for, for, for the young ladies. And I was, I was 12. So I started doing push-ups, sit-ups next to my bed um, at night. And that eventually um, turned into me doing teenage bodybuilding shows. And, uh, and I also wrestled. Um, but it, really early on in life, I sort of developed a fascination with being able to control my body and, and being able to... Um, basically like apply stress to it and then, and then sort of see how it, how it adapts. Um, so that started early on at, at about the age of 12. Um, and then, you know, with that sort of physical background, I went into the special operations community. So I was, uh, okay. I was at about, I was about 19 when I joined the air force to become a, uh, an air force combat controller in, uh, uh, in the U S military. And, uh, and, and, and that, and that was a really interesting, um, sort of journey for me for, um, you know, as you probably know, the, 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 the special operations community, each one has a, um, each one has a, um, a selection process, right? So, and, and, and they're all different. Like if you're a Navy SEAL, you're dealing with a lot of different, like cold water, sand, yeah. um, if you're a ranger, you, you, you know, you're, you're humping through the woods without sleep, very little food for uh, weeks at a time. In the Air Force, for the combat controllers and the pararescue men, um, they would basically use exercise to tear us down, right? And uh, so they, they would basically just beat you down with exercise, like mainly bodyweight exercise, running. So it was, it was calisthenics all day long. And then um, at the end of the day, they would take you to the pool. And and at the pools really where they 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 um, ratch where, where they turned the heat up and, uh, and and you had all these underwater events where you had to hold your breath oh. um, and every event was, was was do or die because you, you could quit at any time so and a lot of times for for some of these events you'd be in the middle of this pool it's you know it's twelve feet deep let's say uh, um, well it depends on the pool but uh, you know it's it's a few meters deep and uh, and you're treading water, you go down to, let's say, tie knots underwater, the, the instructors go down to check it. And, uh, and if it's no good, you have to go back down, you have to, you know, come back up and then, etc. So um, long story short, every single event was either you did it perfectly, or you, you, you failed trying, in which case you have to do it again, or you quit. Um, but there was another option where you, you can pass out trying. And, uh, it, oh, really? Yeah. So if you pass out, because I mean, your options are either you do it or, or you quit. So a lot of times you stay underwater in order to finish your task. Mm. Um, and if you screw, if, if you mess it up the first time, it gets progressively harder and harder because, you know, for example, in some cases, um, I mean, your, your energy levels are going down, especially mm. if you're treading water. Right. Mm. Um, so, uh, so you end up passing out the, the, the instructors would pull you out of the pool, white, you know, pale blue lips, and usually like dreaming about some like dwarf <laughs> in Christmas or something. Something you wake up on the side of the pool, and uh, and the instructor say, "Are you okay?" We oh, yeah, are, Sergeant. All right, get your ass back in the pool. You didn't do it. Try again. <laughs> oh, it's so hardcore. <laughs> it's so crazy. So that so so my that, and that was the first ten weeks of my uh, two years of training in the military. Mm. Um, and, uh, and, and the first class I did there, um, out of about a hundred guys, four guys graduated. Um, really? yeah. And, and those were pre-selected guys. I mean, so you had to, um, you had to have, have a pretty good score on the ASVAB, which was a written test to get into the military. 
and uh, and you had to be able to you know swim 500 meters in less than 15 minutes, you know, run a mile and a half in um, I think uh, under 10 minutes, push up, sit ups, etc. So these were pre-selected guys, and uh, and there was a super high attrition rate. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up making it to the very last day of training in that first class, um, and and then gra- I graduate. I had to do the entire course again. And, and and I graduated the second class. Um, we we started something like 120, and uh, and 12 graduated. Um, so anyway, so that that was kind of like the 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 beginning of my uh, fitness career as a teenager. Then going into the military as a trainee, um, I was on a team for a few years as an operator, and uh, and then I was I was um, selected to to go be an instructor where I would where I would basically. Do similar things to to the one of the um, special ops guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I remember driving down from from the twenty second special tactics squadron in Washington State um, to go be an instructor, and uh, and watching the towers fall. You know, so that was, that was September eleventh. Okay. Yeah, so it was interesting timing for me. Um, when once I got to um, my duty station as an instructor, um, the you know, the command basically said like, hey, we need, we, we, we need more combat controllers. Like you guys have to stop grad, you know, out of classes of a hundred, we can't have classes of two or four or six, right? Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of pressure to, 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 to start training smarter. And, uh, and that's where I, I then again, gathered some really unique experience writing very detailed exercise programs um, where before we'd basically just say, okay, our calisthenics, our swim, our run, here's the instructor. But, you know, I would write out exactly um, rep for rep, set for set, um, exactly what you're gonna do. Like if you're running, the pace, the volume, day to day, week to week, progressions, regressions, et cetera. And, uh, and we had, you know, literally like a captive audience where they had to do it or they could quit. So it was a really nice environment with, uh, along with um, monthly evaluations. So it's a really amazing environment to kind of find out um, what works and what doesn't work. Um, and, and, and then largely based on that experience is, is when I, I then got out, um, I, was, I was still working with the military as a contractor. And, uh, but then that's when I began to write the book, You Are Your Own Gym. Got it, got it. Yeah. That must've been fascinating. And so much of it is obviously mental. People talk about, you know, grit and perseverance, but there's a physical aspect, but when you're, taking people through those experiences, it's really testing their, their mental fortitude in a way, isn't it? Their resilience. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. Um, and, um, I mean, that, and that, that was sort of the, the, the challenge also was, was that, um, you know, the, the, the command always wanted, um, more numbers. They, they wanted less attrition. So we, we, I, we put a lot, or I put a lot of effort into um, creating smarter exercise programs. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, you know, we didn't want the programs to be too efficient, right? Because of like, course, yeah. I created really efficient exercise programs and that's kind of what I continue to do. And mm-hmm. that's part of the reason why I have the mindset about like um, creating efficient exercise programs. And by efficient, I'm not just talking about time, I'm talking about energy. And basically the, the, it's about, it's about cost versus reward. Because if you want a behavior to continue, uh, it should be um, low cost, high reward, or as low cost as possible. And the reward should be um, as high as possible, right? Well, in the special operations community, um, as an instructor, I was, I was more of a gatekeeper. You know, they, of course, they, they, they didn't want us to do that. But me as, as a team guy, as an operator, like, I'm not going to let you through just because you can do push-ups and sit-ups and, and, and run at a certain pace or something like that, right? So yeah. we had these, I developed, we developed these really nice exercise programs. But if we didn't like you, um, we would basically just hit you with, like, incredible amounts of inefficiency. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So your task was to deal with inefficiency. And if you, mm. and if you can overcome um, a lot of nonsense, basically – um, then, then you can, you know, probably make it onto a team, mm. but, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is all about mindset and, um, 
but yeah, it's, 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 I think it's, it's largely about understanding your own behavior. Yeah. Yeah. It must've been really interesting seeing people who come in, you know, built like tough guys, gym guys, uh, who don't make it. And then, you know, just people who are average build, you know, relatively fit who, who do make it. It's unexpected. Uh, I think it was a story by Colonel William McRaven who was talking about, you know, how there was a team of little guys and they just it, it exceeded everyone else because they worked together. Um, I, I know exactly the speech you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, um, right. The, yeah, the, the boat team and they were faster th than everybody else. Um, that happened again and again and again. You, you saw that constantly. And, uh, and that was, that was a really valuable lesson. I mean, I basically always say the, the best students that I had were farm boys. Really? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I was able to see like certain, um, demographics or, or, um, you know, people with certain types of upbringings and, um, and, and backgrounds and, and, and who tended to, to do the best and who didn't. Um, and, and a lot of it just had to do with, um, well, mindset and, and sort of education, but not necessarily like academic education. It was, it was, it was the young men that grew up, um, doing real work and problem solving, especially like problem solving that, that involved their body, like, like taking care of things like yeah. land, farm, animals, um, mm. And, uh, and they were, they were hands down the best. Practical stuff. Real <laughs> it's real work. Yeah, real work. I love it. Real, real problem solving. You know, yeah. taking there's nothing like time in nature, whether you're trekking, hiking, or you're working in, in, in a garden to, to activate your full capacity, you know, your balance, a bit of strength, a bit of problem solving. And it's way more interesting than just going to a gym and pumping iron. Um, right. Well, I mean, I think when it comes to, to resilience or um, pre preparedness, fitness, I mean, to me, fitness um, is, I mean, fitness is generally speaking, it's your ability to survive. Yes. Right? It, and, and, and that really, your ability to survive depends on your preparedness to solve life's problems, especially like those most basic problems that, that are necessary for survival. Um, so I got, I got a lot of time on my hands and I, and I spend time thinking about these things so that I can create exercise programs that, that really um, specifically target people's needs. And of course, like that sort of defi definition also comes from my background as a special ops guy, where um, it was kind of obvious that, that preparedness and readiness fitness is about survival mm. um, and preparedness, your ability to problem solve. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, one of, one of the problems that we always faced was um, like, how do you generally prepare these young guys um, and ourselves for literally, I mean, like very unpredictable situations. Um, and then of course, a lot of, uh, just a, a wide variety of things like, like halo, you know, like, um, high altitude, um, low opening, sort of like military free fall, um, static line, overland, small unit tactics, um, you know, may, maybe some hand to hand, um, amphibious operations, scuba school. Cause we would, we would, we would go to all those schools. Like I was scuba, um, static line, halo, um, et, et cetera. And those are all very different activities. And, 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 and what a lot of athletes, um, that have done a diverse activities are aware of is that like, as you, as you gain proficiency in one activity, you lose proficiency with other activities, right? Like yeah. we we're, were talking about that a little bit, like as you, for example, you're, you're hitting the weights and, and you're looking good, you're feeling good and you're moving more weights around. But then when you try to do other, other most other activities, right, where that extra, you know, three to five or 10 kilos isn't really your friend, your performance goes down. Mm, yeah, and that's it's, in, it's, it's impractical. I mean, you see bodybuilders wandering around and it just looks, it's awkward. <laughs> it, yeah, they're out, they're out of, um, they're out of, they're out of ideal alignment. Yeah. Um, and no disrespect to bodybuilders. <laughs> like if you're into it and you enjoy it, go for it. It's absolutely, it's amazing. But at the same time, talk about readiness and fitness and being prepared for life. 
Uh, it, it also requires a lot of consumption and a lot of work and a lot of maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's, I mean, if, if you, if you do those things, um, like I like to lift weights sometimes, um, and I, I go through phases or, 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 or swing a kettlebell. It's a good feeling. Mm. Um, I use body weight exercise to, uh, to keep me athletic and to, and to sort of, to help me maintain the balance and the foundation so that I can do those things, um, without too much pain or, or becoming sort of like immobile and stiff. Um, so, so for me, body weight exercise is really, it's, it's always my foundation. Okay. Um, and, and I mean, even if you take guys like from, for example, West Side Barbell Club, right? Like the powerlifting team or club. Those guys are moving massive amounts of weights. But one of the guys that or one of the things that they're always talking about is uh, you need a broad base of general physical preparation. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the broader and, and, and stronger that, that foundation is, the higher you can build. Um, and yeah, yeah, and so th- that's really sort of uh, the 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 thing that that I think bodyweight exercise is very well suited for. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your book, Strong and Lean, and you know what are some of the 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 tips that that you provide to people? For example, someone who might just be starting out on their fitness journey. You know, they've realized. I want to get strong, but they're intimidated by gyms and group exercise classes maybe are a step too far. Uh, what, what, what is the, the, the theme of the book and what are some practical tips? <clears throat> well, let me just say that it's, um, it's about efficiency. It's about getting people the most for the least. And, but it's not just about time. It's also about energy. And I think the, the number one mistake that um, people make, even even intermediate and, and, and more advanced um, uh, fitness enthusiasts or athletes is I would say doing too much. Like we, we probably all have a tendency to do too much, especially when we do something new or something that we haven't done in a while, right? Because um, detraining is pretty fast, especially if you're older, like I'm 45, um, so, you, you know, like if I haven't done something in a couple of weeks, even, or a couple of months, year, if it's years, it's, um, um, it's almost like you've never done it. But, uh, the, 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 the biggest problem typically is you start out and you're doing too much. And then what happens, you, or you, you do more than you really need to do in order to make progress, right? Cause ideally you do just enough so that there's adaptation right and then and then uh, so that so that basically you apply stress you get a little bit weaker right there might be a little bit of soreness fatigue obviously and then there's super compensation you get strong mm-hmm. um but we uh, especially if 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 you used to be in shape with a certain type of activity then you're you, you remember what you what you used to be able to do yeah you, know, you have expectations Right, so you jump in, you work out, and uh, and then you're super sore. And and if that then involves going to the gym, you got a twenty to thirty minute commute. You're packing a gym bag. You know you're you're gonna probably do a variety of weights. Um, you know, do a set, rest, etc. Do that for I don't know forty five minutes. Maybe you're doing a little bit of cardio, and then you're driving back home. That's a big time and energy cost. Yeah, it is. And it's probably way more than you need if you haven't trained in a while. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you can do that for, um, you know, three or four times a week, you're looking at an extra work day, basically. Um, and it's, it's just not necessary. And I think because the cost is so high, right, and then the, the reward um, that re- doesn't really justify such a high cost, the behavior tends to stop or discontinue. Yes. And and that's what and that's what strong and lean is really about. It's 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 about getting you a really good starting point. Um, I mean, they're nine minute workouts. There's a warm up and cool down, so let's let's call it fifteen minutes, right? And uh, and and really targeting athletic fundamentals, which 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 are those basic skills that are always being used, like like improving your posture, the joint functions, especially for your hips, spine, and shoulders, and your ability to control weight shifting. So, so with these really short workouts that you can do at home, um, you're, you're going to get stronger, 
leaner. The leaner part of obviously depends on your diet as well. Um, and, uh, and, and, improve, and improve your athletic foundation so that you can move better pain-free. And, uh, and, and the programs are designed, or the program is designed with a lot of really smart progressions built in. So it starts out relatively easy. It gives you what you need up front to build that foundation. Um, and then later on, um, I mean, so it, it continuously gets harder and harder, but more purely strength training type workouts are not introduced until the third six week cycle. Um, because it kind of depends on your age. If you're young, um, you can kind of get away with a lot, you know, like yeah, yeah. Your, stre your stress tolerance is higher. You're like, like young people are basically built to, to, to solve problems with a lot of inefficiency. Like they could be wasteful. Right? <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's so true. <laughs> it is so true. When you're, when, uh, I, that's the, that's the beauty of being young. You can do crazy things and you bounce back fast. You can be inefficient. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, uh, as a 44 year old, uh, you can't, you know, there's time efficiency. You've got a family, busy life, uh, but there's also the risk of injury and doing, doing things that are you know, not quite suitable. Right. I mean, stress tolerance just tends to go down as we age. Mm. Um, so, so the first, the, the, the first, um, priority really, um, with a good exercise program is to ensure those fundamentals are in place. Like just to make sure that your posture is in place, your joint functions are in place so that you're mobile and stable. Basically the, I mean, one way to put it is your ability to position properly, right? Which, which is about joint alignment. And, mm. and a lot of times the, the, the reason, especially as we age that, that we're not able to, um, maintain a, a strong muscular body is because um, a strong muscular body requires stress. You have to apply real stress to your body. And, and if those fundamentals are not in place, if um, your joint alignment is off, then, um, then you can't handle as much stress. It's like the structure of anything else, like a bridge. The ideal alignment of the parts are going to determine the integrity of that bridge. And, yeah. and you're no different, except it's more dynamic because it involves movement. So coordination is a big part of that. Right. It's like knowing where it's, it's like, it's like a, it's, it's just like, you know, like rugby or, or, or any other sport, like it, it's about real athletic ability and knowing how to position properly. Um, and before you know how to position properly, um, it doesn't really make sense to start applying a whole bunch of stress to your body in order to get a lot, you know, stronger. So, so yeah. really it's about teach people how to position properly. Right. Like you could, you could, you could describe that as mobility, like the ability to get into the right positions. And then we progressively challenge you to maintain those positions, um, which increases your strength and stability. So we Love make it. it harder and harder for you to maintain those positions. Yes. But the starting point is with your, you know, as you said, that mobility, that positioning, making sure that when you do start exerting more stress, you're not going to break. You've got the fundamentals. Exactly. Exactly. I love the idea of nine minutes. I mean, this, I recently wrote an article. It was published on Entrepreneur Magazine where I talked about micro habits and dedicating, it, it turned out to be 9.6 minutes per day to your own improvement. Uh, you know, you have, you, you can really set yourself up for macro results, real results, because you, you've broken things down into their tiny component parts. And there's less resistance. You're not worrying. You know, don't have to drive to the gym. Uh, it's small things that you can do. Uh, so, so you, we've talked about the first cycle. What happens in the second and the third cycles? <clears throat> okay, so the program is split up into five, six-week cycles. Um, cycle one and cycle two consist of purely floor exercises. Or, okay. or, or exercises that require nothing but floor space. And, uh, and these nine minute workouts each have three exercises. So oh, you do three okay. exercises. Yeah, you, you, you do three exercises for three rounds. So three times three is nine. So achievable. It, it, it is. And it's, um, and it's a very simple format that makes it easy to learn how to do these workouts. There's not, there's not like a lot of page turning. Um, there's not, there's, um, there is complexity in the program. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll explain some of it as simply as I, as I can, but, um, so for, for the first two cycles, the, the priority priority is really building that foundation. 
And, and the, so each exercise has a floor exercise to improve your posture. And, and those exercises focus on your, your, your hips, your glutes, your core, your, your, your abs, um, and then your upper back basically the musculature along your, your spine so that you can, and, and we do that in, in lying positions so that you can get into better joint alignment, you can get into better posture. Um, so that's the, so one exercise is always one of those. Mm. Um, we have a second category um, that are called mobility exercises. And those mobility exercises basically teach you they're more difficult, so they require more strength. They're, they're, they require more flexibility, and they basically teach you to move your arms and legs around a stable, neutral st spine. All right. So we systematic we systematically improve your your your, your posture, um, which is your ability to maintain a neutral spine, generally speaking, and then mm -hmm. and then we improve your 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 joint functions um, for your hips, spine, and shoulders by teaching you to or, or challenging you to to move your arms and legs around a neutral spine. Um, the third exercise category is, uh, our standing exercises. And that's going to be, of course, more your, your legs, your hips, your spinal erectors. And, uh, and, and they also involve weight shifting. Okay. And transitioning between lying and standing positions. Mm. Um, and, and those are really the fundamentals that like, that, um, that I think get overlooked, like a, an exercise program to be comprehensive, um, should, should first focus on the things that, that get used the most. So it's a lot like learning math, for example, like the, the first, like what, what are the, fu the fundamentals are always the things that get used the most. And the more something get, gets used, the more fundamental it is. Right. So like the first thing you learn when, when you're a kid for math is to, to count because numbers get used for everything. Right. And then it's addition and subtraction, um, multiplication and, and division. There's, there's a systematic progression from simple to complex. Yeah. And, and it's no different with when learning athletic ability. Um, and a posture gets used for everything. Joint functions get used for everything. Weight shifting gets used for everything. Like every step you take involves a lateral weight shift. Mm. Throwing a punch, throwing a ball, kicking a ball, they all, they all involve weight shifting. So, so the first couple of cycles, they make you stronger, they make you leaner while improving those basics. Um, in cycle three, strength, like uh, more, more strength focused workouts are, are introduced. And, and those workouts um, each have a pushing, pulling, and hip hinging movement. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Your hips are so important. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. This is great. And is there a limit? For example, some people say I'll never be fit again. So is there, I mean, from what you're saying, it sounds to me like this is a perfect program for someone who's in their sixties, who wants to maintain mobility, who wants to protect themselves from injury later on in life. Like, is there a target audience for the book? It's not for special forces type people only? Um, I mean, it, it starts small. It starts small. It's, um, it's not so easy that everybody can use it, to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, at Mark Warren On Demand, I, I have lots of programs. I have, I have 17 um, programs that are really, really well thought out. Um, and for example, like those basics that I described, th they're, they're definitely... Um, um, in strong and lean, and, and they, they sort of um, guide the, the exercise programming, but they start out at a somewhat higher level. Like okay. I, I have programs that start out much easier that would be appropriate for basically for people that think that, that um, thought that maybe I can never get back into shape because I have mm -hmm. back problems, I have joint problems, et cetera. I'm on, I'm on medications, et cetera. Um, so, so, I mean, some feedback, from certain users um, is, hey, strong and lean's kind of hard for me. Okay. Um, but I have, I have programs for them as well. Great. Um, it's, but it, I would say for the, for the general public, it, it starts small with um, appropriate workouts and then progresses gradually. And by the time you get to, to um, the, I mean, even the workouts at, in, in cycle one, 
um, are pretty challenging. And, and the thing about it is they're going to be movements that you're un unaccustomed to. Yeah. So it's just a new form of stress. So even if you're, if you're, if, if you're lifting weights and you're strong, honestly, if you're lifting weights and you're strong in the gym, they might be especially hard for you. Mm. Um, it's just because it's, it's, it's a different type of stress. Um, but anyways, the, the strength training in the later cycles um, are really challenging. Um, so there's a progression from small um, to, 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 to much bigger over the course of uh, five, six week cycles. Great. It's a pretty fast progression too. That, that, that's what I like. And the fact that you've worked with people in the military, I mean, what a perfect environment in which to measure progress because it is so structured and people allow you to do this, you know, compliance is high. Uh, I, I think, yeah, being able to translate what you've learned from that realm into a very practical, measurable program makes a lot of sense. I'm looking forward to trying it uh, myself. Uh, considering your background, uh, what would you say is the ideal physique for someone to aspire towards? Is it, you know, we spoke about bodybuilding, which is great for people who love it, but it's not necessarily practical for or achievable for everyone. Um, what would you say is the, the kind of ideal physique? I would say the ideal physique is um, more in the middle, um, where where you're, where you're generally well rounded and and and, and capable, um, and, and I think a big part of resilience um, and preparedness, re which is what fitness is about, um, it's about your ability to adapt, and what like what is adaptation like? It's it's about it's about your ability to learn. So so again, like th these exercise programs that that I design. Um, they improve your preparedness um, by by specifically focusing on fundamental athletic skills. And you know, when I say fundamental athletic skills, sometimes people tend to think that they're easy. Um, but if you're if you're if you you know if if you're training an Olympic sprinter, you're focusing on on, on fundamentals or or any kind of athlete, right? Because mm -hmm. in the end, it's always still about efficiency. Um, and what is it that you're going to be working on, um, if not the fundamentals? Um, so what am I getting at here? The, um, it's, it's about, it's about preparedness, but one of the, the, the real problems that, that I had when I first published, you are you on gym after being a special ops trainer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I was boxing here in Thailand and, um, when the, when the book first published and, you know, I, I sold over a million copies and it, which was, you know, I, 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 was lucky. I got lucky. Um, and, and, and people are suddenly introducing me as, hey, here's Mark Warren, uh, a functional training expert, the author of, you know, best-selling, you are your own gym. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, expert? Like, you're an expert, Mark? Like, and I, I, I remember really sort of having this conversation with myself, like, because I was, I was thinking, you have to be honest with yourself, Mark, you're not, are you really an expert? Because you wrote a book. I had, I had, at that time, I already had 20 years of highly consistent training. I was a special ops trainer and I created these programs with great success. Mm -hmm. but, but one of the things I was very aware of, um, especially because I was coming to Thailand to box, is that in many, many, many situations, um, the, the improvements in actual like practical performance, um, it, it was just like an in inefficient way to improve performance, right? Like, like exercise doesn't, I used to tell myself, exercise doesn't really work that well. To, to improve real life performance. Like if you want to be good at boxing, you have to box. Yes. If you want to, if you want to be good at running, you have to run. Mm. Right. And, and of course that's true to some degree, but, um, but when people think about functional exercise programs and me coming from a special operations community, we're like, it, it's about general preparation. Right. So the problem is like, okay, like you only get good at what you do. I'm trying to pre generally prepare people. So how do I do that? without like having them do everything. And, and the answer was relatively simple. You specifically focus on those skills that are always getting used or that get used the most. And that way you lay a foundation so that you can, you're, you're, you're prepared to quickly learn specialized skills because the fu fundamentals are already in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I think when, it, like, if you talk about resilience um, on, on, Again, like it gets back to, to, to survival, I guess. Um, 
you know, like you have no idea what's going to happen in the world. And, and so how do you prepare generally for, for who knows what? You make sure that you've got really strong fundamentals, right? Um, you, you avoid unnecessary complexity. You keep things simple and you do basic things really, really well. You know, and, and, and fitness, is about, fitness is about the basics, the things that are necessary for survival, right? Like everybody knows, like basically three things are usually talked about. Uh, of course, there's movement, which I specialize in. There's nutrition and there's recovery. Yeah. Right? Those are the basic things that you need to survive. Um, and, it's about, and it's basically about energy, right? Energy, like movement, you're using energy. Nutrition, you're taking energy in and, and recovery. Right. Um, and, and so, so fitness and preparation and resilience, it's, it's about fundamentals and, and, and doing them really well. Like, and, it, and I, you know, like I felt, I apply this sort of reasoning to everything. It's mm -hmm. part of the reason that I live in Thailand, because I feel like it's a very resilient place because the, the, they're very serious about like, they have strong family units. Yeah. Um, they have very strong communities. Yeah. They, they're, they're serious. Like Thais love to play around about everything. They're serious about their food. They right? are. And they yeah. have great they food. Have, excuse me? And they have great food. Great food. Yeah. And it's fresh. A lot of the food that I eat, it's never been refrigerated. So they have short food supply chains. There's not yeah. all this unnecessary complexity where if the internet goes out or power goes out, you know, the entire community starves. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, to me, that, that's, those are big issues. So that like when you have these long food supply chains and you're totally dependent on, like I remember being in Florida um, um, and our license plates have oranges on them because that's what we grow oranges. When I go to the grocery store, the, my oranges are from California. It makes no sense. It's crazy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so that sort of complexity um, reduces resilience. And um, yeah, so I mean, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent, but um, it's yeah, it's just about basics and yeah. doing basics really well. Because if you, for example, only focus on physical fitness and you neglect your sleep, and there are many examples out there of you know hero mentality. I sleep three hours per night and I exercise, and uh, you know, eventually, eventually, you're not going to be as fit as you could be. At some point, something's going to break. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a time, time for that, but it, it should be, um, it should be well thought out. And, and mm. I think even in those extreme situations, um, and maybe especially in those extreme situations where you're really pushing yourself, efficiency is extra super important. You know, yes. like your ability to go further kind of depends on, on knowing exactly what you need and getting rid of like unnecessary stuff. Um, Mm, yeah. I love the message of keep it simple and people's lives have become so complex. They're dealing with more information than ever before. You know, we're overwhelmed with competing stimuli. Our phones are always in our pockets. Keep it simple in everything that you do and go back to some of those fundamentals. It's such a, it's a great message and not just for your physical exercise, but for, for everything. Yes. And I, I will say really that's, um, so, so these ideas that, that I apply to my, um, exercise programs, I, I, I apply them very broadly and, mm. and I really try to live by them. Um, mm. yeah, keep it simple. Like, like spend time considering what your actual needs are, um, and, and, and reduce. Mm, like get clarity. Like, what do you really want? What do you really need? Because yeah. if you're just comparing yourself to, Instagram, you might find that you end up on the wrong track. Who, who inspires you, Mark, uh, in your life? Who have been some, some people who have inspired you or mentored you? I mean, as a, as a kid, um, I had the typical sort of heroes. I, I had a poster of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger on my wall, the, 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 the shot where he's, uh, he's looking in the mirror with it, like checking out his calf. Not his calf, uh, you know. I know that one. Yes, and he was, I guess that was the year that, that he, he came back and his calves had grown a lot. Um, Bruce Lee, and I, I read the, the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, and that's kind of the, that was one of my first, um, you know, he, he, in that book, he talked about, um, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, but he, he says, perfection is achieved when there's nothing left to take away. Um, 
mm. you know, efficiency. Yes, it's about not necessarily always adding more. It's what can you let go of. It it's it's about doing necessary things perfectly. And uh, and, and he said things like, you know, I'm not worried about the guy that can throw. Um, 10,000 kicks. I'm worried about the guy that throw, has thrown one kick 10,000 times. Yeah. Again, about simplicity and, and, and just hammering those fundamentals. And, and around that time, I, I, I read the book, um, um, Tao Te Ching, um, which, which, you know, it, it, it's also from, from, from China. And there were concepts that I was really sort of fascinated by that book, but, you know, they, they talk about like one of the core principles is, is do nothing. Mm. Right. And it's, um, and again, it's, it, it just gets back to efficiency. Um, so that, that, that was a, the, the, a big inspiration, um, that sort of, I think helped get me to where I am now in the military. Um, you know, I, I told you the, the first selection course, um, we only had four guys graduate. And, and, and part of the reason was that we, uh, uh we didn't have any leadership on that. Uh, in that course, it was just a bunch of young young airmen. In the second class, um, there there was a captain, which at that time I think was was thirty two. Um, he graduated from the Air Force Academy, um, grew up in Utah, and just had really good values. He had really good values. He had a good upbringing. He had a good solid education. Um, he he was a man's man that that um, demonstrated what he expected of you. He really led by example. Um, and, and he was a very, he taught me a lot about basically, um, yeah, lead, lead, I mean, mainly lead by example and, and, and pay attention to your values. Um, like what yeah. is it that you care about? Like strong values, values based leadership. It makes all the difference. That's how you can motivate a group to a common cause without, you know, command and conquer style leadership. It's like, here's what's important. Now let's act in alignment with that. Right. I mean, yeah, exactly. I think it's um, just like we were talking about the, the integrity of any sort of structure. Um, the strength of any kind of structure depends on the, 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 the proper alignment of its parts, whether it's a bridge or your body, um, you know, which requires coordination because there's movement involved, but that applies to a team as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So like the, the, the integrity and strength of a team depend on them being able to coordinate properly in order to align properly to achieve some, some, some objective. And, and, you know, the definition of teamwork that was always drilled into to, to our head is um, teamwork is a group of individuals working together to achieve some common goal by setting aside personal comforts and desires for that team. Um, so it was also about, about like getting into alignment and like, I think one good example of, of that is I, I think the word integrity comes from, from the Romans and when, when, when they would create their formations and I, um, I, I believe their shields were on the left side, okay. uh, the spears were on the right side, but your shield doesn't cover your entire body. Your, it covers half of your body and half of the guy's body next to you. So when you create these, these formations, you're dependent on the guy next to you to cover part, half of your body. So there's a tendency, of course, to creep in the direction of your buddy's shield, oh, which excludes yes. the guys on the left of you. Mm -hmm. and everybody else has to start creeping. Right. So, so the integrity of that formation really depended on everybody staying where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. right? Integrity. Integrity. I love it. Yeah. It's doing what you need to do under stress. And that is applicable to all aspects of life. Everything. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts? Uh, it's been a pleasure. We could talk about this stuff all day. I hope we do get to do it again. Any final thoughts for people out there? Maybe young people thinking, you know, I've been sitting indoors for two and a half years over the course of a pandemic. I want to get started. Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, um, it doesn't take that much. I, I think a lot of times, um, it, it sounds too good to be true that, that you can get real results with, uh, with nine minute workouts. I would say nine minutes is actually for, for people that haven't done anything in a while. It's actually more than you need. Um, and it, it's, 
you know, anytime you want to, you, you, it's kind of like you, you said you just wrote a paper on it, right? Like if, 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 if you want to achieve great results, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on consistency mainly, right? Yeah. Like greatness depends on consistency more than anything else. Right. So, so the key is, and I, and I still do it with, with everything, start tiny, start tiny and progress gradually step by step. Don't let yourself be seduced into doing too much. Cause that's really when like the cost starts to outweigh the benefit and that's when the behavior stops. And then you're, you're in this sort of like start stop cycle or it just stops altogether. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't really take that much to maintain a very important part of your life that's going to positively influence everything else. Love it. Everyone, check out the links in the show notes. I'm sure you'll get a lot of value from the book, and I'm certainly going to give it a try myself. Mark, thank you so yeah. much for joining. Yeah, thank you. It was a real pleasure. I appreciate it. Excellent. See yeah. you, everyone, and we'll see you for the next episode of the Resilience Podcast.